Welcome to another video on the Card Market YouTube channel and you might have guessed it already by the title and us putting out another community post. We're back grading your custom design cards. Yeah, the first one was a banger. Very fun for us, very fun for you. You gave us many, many suggestions that we actually didn't quite know which all of those to choose from, but we chose ones that had high potential or I assume low potential, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we're gonna go through it. And yeah. if you yeah, love the things we're doing, if you want to see this segment, any other segment, well, what you gotta do, you have to subscribe to the channel because you know the drill, yeah. yeah, you know the drill. It helps us grow the channel. It helps us justify this whole thing to card market itself. I want to note one more thing before we get into the actual cards, which is that this is constructive criticism. It's very easy for us to sit here and judge custom cards, but it's much, much harder to rack your brain for custom card designs, balance them, hit them with the right flavor and everything else. And the people who submit here have put their work out for us to judge. And we're not doing this in like mean spirits or anything. So huge props for anyone who reached out. And yeah, thank you for providing these custom cards to us. Yeah, well that word, let's go. Equal footing, two wide wide sorcery. You may excite to land cards from your hand rather than pay equal footings mana cost. Each player chooses a basic land type all land not of the chosen types are destroyed. I, I had a tough time deciding here, but I'll give this a three uh, solely based on the fact that land destruction isn't very fun. We don't do that these days anymore, like just, just like that. Usually we replace lands or something. Land destruction isn't very fun. Why can I cast this for free? <laughs> uh, what, like not even getting into the balance side of things, but why? Like why do I need to destroy lands for free? That That's just a no-go these days. And then also I, I don't see how this is an equal footing. An equal footing would remind me of like a balance card where if you have more lands, you, you sacrifice some until you get on my level. Mm -hmm. But this is not equal footing. This is punish the multicolored player. So you would probably put this into some sort of monocolor deck to keep all your own lands and then hope that your opponent is multicolored because if your opponent is monocolored, it does nothing. It does, it does absolutely nothing. However, why I gave it a three is I don't think this is broken. It's just, it just has uh, these weird levels where either it's absurdly powerful or it's just useless. So I, I don't think it's broken. The balance is okay, but apart from that, no, thank you. So I, I actually kind of like a lot of things that are going on. I feel the idea of some of the mechanics are quite neat. For example, you exile two land cards, which is cool because, well, you're destroying them. Why would you play them? You, mm, can, you can save yeah. them up to destroy them. Also, it doesn't host people that play a lot of basic lands or basic land types. So it's even their choice, not yours what to destroy. I mean, you could have switched it around saying, okay, you destroy whatever is named, mm. which would be much stronger. So I think for land destruction to work, as you said, they take out a lot of land destruction because it's frustrating. There are quite some security measures to not make this card unplayable. Yeah, right? yeah. Obviously, it's really strong if your opponent doesn't play uh, basic lands, like non basic lands that have a type. But I think that's kind of rare nowadays. Like, people don't start with, I don't even know where, because you, people use fetch lands into dual lands, or basic lands, or trial lands. I mean, it really depends on the format. In standard, you have all those Yavimaya coasts. Yes. Like, this would be the problem. Like, I, I, th I see the most issue in standard um, or against Tron. Please and, don't do Tron. Hey? And Pioneer too. Like, you don't, you don't have the fetch lands there, so you do rely on, like, Haunted Ridge, like the Innistrad ones. Yeah, I can see that. Although, when you're choosing to play a lot of colors, then uh, there should be a downside, yeah. right? I, I think the card is not doable as it is, but I really like the effort it makes for not being unreasonable. So yeah. I will give it a five. Next up is prepare for the future, an enchantment for one blue blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may name a card. From the beginning of your next upkeep to the end of your next turn, the named card costs one colorless less to cast. Tuffle, what's your verdict? I would say this is a Two? Oh, interesting. All right, all right. I'll, I'll uh, be up front. I gave it a five. Okay, uh, here's my reasoning. You name something for the future, right? Obviously, and then your next turn, let's just say your next turn, it's cheaper because I don't really understand why it says upkeep. Like, Yeah, it's just your next turn. It's just basically the next turn. Yeah, yeah this, this could be we can assume it. phrased easier. There's a little bit of a memory issue for this. You, you kind of have to write it down. I don't think that's a problem. You just name it. It's, it's not a problem, I would say. It's a, it's a minor issue. But why I don't understand is you name one card, right? And then this card gets cheaper and then you can change. So the other card is cheaper. Yeah. And 
at this point, why don't you play a two mana rock? Which gives you a colors mana for every card you're gonna play. And I don't see the effort of going through this except for like having enchantment with devotion. Obviously you get something like if you cast multiple spells that are named the same at the same time, but that's usually not gonna happen. So it's weak. I would actually find it much interesting if you make a two list of cards. Yeah. And I would think that solves the problem. I agree with you in that this card cannot be printed as is, um, but I think the idea is kind of cool. Like yeah. the kind of next turn thing. What I want to add to your uh, criticism is that this doing this every turn gets a hassle, gets to be a hassle real quick for very little payoff. Mm. You have to remember a new card every turn and every turn. So why not make this part one of a saga or, or something that costs more? And I also agree with you that like to make this feel more special, don't make it cost one less, make it cost three less. Like make it a really memorable effect, like, okay. a, like in a high impact effect. So you would kind of have to restructure the entire card, <laughs> um, but I like I really, really like the idea that's going on here with like predicting the future and having a big payoff for it. But yeah, so that's why I gave it a five. But I do agree that this card as is couldn't be printed. Hiritsugo's second wasteland. Oh yeah. As Hiritsugo's second wasteland comes into play, you may choose a land card in your graveyard. If you do, Hiritsugo's second wasteland enters the battlefield tapped and as a copy of that card. Okay. So it's basically a Vesuva for cards in your graveyard. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's actually the reason why I don't find this unlikely to be printed, kind of. Uh, and I gave it a seven. I didn't give it give it a full ten because so this is not like a revolutionary new design, but that that's also not needed for good card design. Uh, what I do dislike, if you want to be serious about designing cards, don't name it Hidetsuko's Second Wasteland. This can be a flavorful name. And then also, uh, what what happens if there's no land card in your graveyard? It just like you may copy something it says right now. Um, does it have a land type? Should it be a waste that then enters tapped or something? At least make me sacrifice it if it's useless. Like some things need to be smoothed out of the uh, around the edges of the card. But apart from that, I see this being printed. This is just yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit biased here since Hidetsugu's second ride is my favorite part of all time, <laughs> and I'm not quite sure what the implications of that is, but. It, if you have something that names that card, it needs to be epic. And it's not epic, so obviously the name is a bit... Uh... Disappointing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be a nice... <laughs> yeah. Let's go for the effect. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to figure out in my head what could go wrong. And... I don't know, it's probably not that... Bad. No, like, yes. I mean, we have Vesuva, like, yeah. But for Vesuva, you have to make an effort to have the card in your in play. Um, for example, in a in a format where you have wastelands, um, it, the, this card is much stronger. Yeah. Because you can use the wasteland then and yeah. do the other stuff. So I'm not quite sure how it would pan out to have eight wastelands in your deck uh, that you can use right away. Worst case, it's like a fetch land. Uh, it's also like a graveyard. I don't know if that matters, but I think it's fine. Yeah, I'd go for a seven as well. Kaya's Command is an instant that costs white, black, and a two generic mana. And it creates two 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature tokens with flying. Then you choose one, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, or creatures you control gain death touch and vigilance until end of turn. Tuffle, what's your verdict? I would like to give it an eight. I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm gonna give it a nine. Mm, yeah. Uh, I was also debating to go higher, but I have a few minor points, I'd say. Yes, <laughs> same. Okay, so first of all, it's a command. I'm not quite sure, but I think every command has four choices and that makes this name quite unfortunate. 100% agreed. Okay. <laughs> so I like the, the flavor of black white. I think Kaya used as a representation for the idea is pretty good. I mean, that's kind of exactly what she can do. I think the choices are kind of unbalanced because you mostly want to put the counters and then rarely you want to do the other thing, which is fine. I mean, you don't have to have an equal choice every time. Um, just be aware that this needs to be like a rare for limited because 
putting Hunter is just much, much stronger, but I don't see any big issue. Yeah, I fully agree. The command thing kind of irks me. Now, I actually like the, the, that the plus one, plus one counter, counters are a stronger option because this is an instant. And the counters kind of want you to, to do it in your own turn rather than your opponent's turn. So there's a kind of uh, decision you have to make. Do I get the, the pump on my, like the bump in power on my board right now? Mm -hmm. Or do I wait until my opponent's turn to react to stuff? Also, I like the choices because um, one is very clearly your own turn and the other is very clearly your opponent's turn. With the death touch thing, what you mostly want to do is, oh, I've got two surprise death touch blockers yeah. uh, to block your creatures with, with which is very, very powerful uh, in that regard. Then my final issue with this, like tiny issue with this is, so the death touch mode is my opponent's turn. Mm. Why do my creatures get vigilance? Give them anything else, give them... Lifelink, I don't know if that's too strong. Give them anything. Maybe just don't give them any, don't give them vigilance, but why is the word word vigilance <laughs> on a card that is supposed to be activated during my opponent's turn, yeah. the, the mode? Because during my own turn, I'm gonna g give them the plus one, plus one, I'm certain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that, overall, great design. Could be printed like this if, if just like with, with a small adjustments. Yeah, I feel like this couldn't have printed like five years ago, but nowadays. Yeah, these days. The, it fits just right in. The card is clearly super, super powerful, but those are cards today. It's like lingering souls on crack. Splitternate. Red. Artifact. Two red tap. Sacrifice. Splitternate. Splitternate deals two damage to each creature and each player. Each player creates a weapon token. A weapon is an artifact equipment with whenever equipped creature attacks, it gets plus one plus oh on the end of turn and equip one. So this is an eight for me, Tafel. What mm -hmm. do you think? Uh, no, no, I'm going on. I actually, I, I have a minor nitpick, but I would say that's that's a nine. Yeah, let's go for a nine. So this is clearly designed like with a set in mind that introduces the weapon mechanic. Um, first criticism of the weapon mechanic, why does it only work on attack? If I'm creating equipment tokens, I want them to be as simple as possible. Those are tokens, those yes. are not cards. Uh, just have a, an equipment token that gives plus one plus zero. Perfect, that, that's a cool token, like easy to remember. Agreed. Also, why does the splinternade give me weapons? Like, yes, I can kind of see that, but, but then uh, that depends on the flavor tie in with your entire set. Like what are weapons? Can a weapon be anything? Like is a glass shard a weapon then? But we'll, I'll look over that. Apart from that, my only concern is uh, something about balance and being able to recur artifacts repeatedly, kind of locking creature decks out. But at the same time, dealing two damage to everything, that's fine. You're paying four mana in total for an effect that usually costs three. Um, I'm fine with that. We have three mana instant speed deal two damage to almost anything. So yeah, this is just a well-designed card. I like it. Yeah, uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure if it's presumed as a common. It's pretty strong for a common. Oh yeah, true. Uh, it's hard to say if that was the intention, but I would at least make it an uncommon for a given set, uh, probably relevant. I really like that it deals damage to everything because that kind of makes it a bit awkward for against creatures because you're self taking damage because True. you want to protect, yeah. but also yeah. for the creatures you deal damage to your player, but then you kill your creature. So it's not like a go-to thing that's just working all the time. It just makes sense that everything gets damaged. And, yeah, whatever gets destroyed or the grenade itself gets destroyed, gets picked up as a weapon. Pretty neat. Love it. Phyrexian Glutton, I hope I pronounced that correct. I'm, I'm not native in English. Anyways, is a three mana artifact creature Phyrexian construct that has zero power, zero toughness, but devour two and modular. And as a refresher, maybe if you don't know those keywords, devour two means you can sacrifice any number of creatures when this one enters the battlefield and it enters with twice the amount of plus one plus one counters. Uh, on it and modular means when this creature dies you can put its plus one plus one counters on any other artifact creature tafel what do you think you ready yeah. all right i think this is a 10. I, I agree this is a 10 for me as well yeah this nice. is i i just think it's beautiful like it, it mixes both mechanics quite well it's hard to put it into one set i would assume so it's probably more of a master's card. Yeah, or Modern Horizons. Like this exact kind of design, in my opinion, is a Modern Horizons design. And this, this I, honestly, 
if they printed this in Modern Horizons 2, I wouldn't have been surprised. This is just a card. Oh, this yeah. is just a card. The only thing, and we had to quickly Google that one, <laughs> is uh, to check if every modular card so far has been named Arcbound, like if there's a convention being broken, but it's not. There are others, a Scrapyard Recombiner or something, was no Arcbound something and still had modular. So. Yeah. 10 out of 10, you, you've done it. You've I, done, I, yeah. Did we have a 10 last episode? I don't remember. I don't think so, no. But I think the only thing that is a little bit uh, weird to me is that the Devourer works for non-artifact stuff. But I think in this case, just for elegancy and complexity, it's completely yeah. fine and I don't mind it at all. I actually also love the combination of Devourer and Modular. Yeah, yeah because it's beautiful. You can sacrifice your other modular creatures and put their counters on this one. It's um, yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's amazing. Yes, you can. Yep. No, 10 out of 10. It's beautiful. Disagreement. Raktus, Raktus. So, two mana, both of those can be red or black. Instant. Choose one. Sacrifice a vampire. Target werewolf creature gets plus three plus one and trample. Or, sacrifice a werewolf. Target vampire gets plus one plus one and lifelink and death touch. Topple. For me, this is a one. Oh, one is quite rough. I would say it gets a five. A five? Yes. All right, all right. Um, now, first up, I, I think we can both agree this card wouldn't be printed. Not at all. This is, will never be printed. Um, secondly, there's some issues with the wording because when you choose one you, and then you pay costs later, that doesn't really work. But we can we can throw that out of the window. We'll fix this card. Like we assume this is worded the right. way it was intended. You, you either... can just a second then if the card was black. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the word we assume the wording is correct. So first up, the power level is way, 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 way too low because yes, yes. you sacrifice yes, yes. a card and you get a combat trick that's like worse than giant growth. Like why why does this cost two mana? Mm -hmm. um, I disagree not. <laughs> yes. So power level is way too low. Yes. Um, why does this card force me to play werewolves and vampires at the same time? And then I have to sacrifice one to get a payoff? Like, I'm fine with including both in my deck, but I have to even have both on the field to even cast this combat trick. Mm -hmm. The power level isn't there. <laughs> Once again, this show is not meant to poke fun at anything, uh, just if you're designing cards, um, compare them to other existing cards, like what kind of power level is already there, and then go from there, because uh, this is just straight up worse than other things, although it has an idea behind it, right? Like there's clearly an idea of vampires don't like werewolves, um, but the, the, the way this is incorporated just doesn't work out. Here's my defending. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, th this is what this show is for. Yeah. I agree with all those. I think the idea is quite neat. So you kind of have a struggle and one side wins, so the other one gets a bonus, right? Yeah. And obviously it's all messed up, but I think you can fix it a lot by having the bonus be worth it. My first inclination, if you want to keep like this trade-off thing, instead of putting a Temporary bonus, you can put counters on it. It's mm -hmm. so like you can, all of those could be counters. I mean, three plus three plus one doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> there were actually some of those counters. Uh, but just give it like two plus one plus one counters and a trample counter and whatever, and then you make it better. Or uh, what I thought after is in Mirror Dim Besieged, I think, or in Fate Reforged, we had like uh, enchantments that were chose but gave you a permanent effect, like the sieges. Mm, right? Yeah. So you could also have this be like an anthem for the other tribe where you have to kind of work for. Now, there are some problem like problems with you do have to play them one and the other, yeah. and then you kind of want a lot more of the other. I, I like the idea of a siege where you have to sacrifice one of the other tribe to grant a great permanent bonus to the first tribe. Yeah. Because then it's actually like a deck building challenge. Like, can you build a werewolf deck that has like the one vampire every time it needs it? but you will always have a feel bad when you build that deck, you don't draw your werewolf and then yeah. you're stuck with that card. Then there needs to be some consideration how you want to pull it off. But I, I kind of like, as you said, the challenge and the flavor of the issue of the fight between them, the, the tension and stuff. So obviously also like Innistrad and Hybrid doesn't go along. Like there's no 
mm, hybrid but, mana on Instrad. Exactly, yeah. so they, they need to be linked. But I think the, the core idea is quite promising. So I like it. Skeletor, Lord of Bones or something, which is a pretty weird Lord title. <laughs> I'm Lord of Bones or something. One red, green, black for three, two legendary creature skeleton. Skeletons you control and in your graveyard have plus one plus O. Skeletons in your graveyard have scavenge X where X is their casting cost. So first up, uh, there's some templating issues here. Uh, creatures don't have, uh, like either they have the scavenge cost equal to their mana cost, which would include colors, or they have scavenge X colorless, which would be X colorless to their mana value. Does matter? We assume this is fixed, right? But given that, I will give this a six out of 10. How about you, Tuffle? I'll give it a 10. Oh, a 10! I love it. Wow, all right. So, I love I love the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord of Bones is a very fun name. Uh, also, why <laughs> a skeleton lord? We had something last episode with a ship that turns stuff into skeletons. Yes, awesome, why no skeleton commander? Um, but what I dislike and what I heavily dislike is why do we have to grant creatures in my graveyard plus one plus zero when the literal only bonus I get is the scavenging. It forces you to think about, hmm, why do my creatures in the graveyard get plus one plus zero without any real payoff? Like, oh yes, it, it works with the second line, but why not just make it whenever you scavenge, you put one additional counter or something? Apart from that, like once you remove that, I feel like it's a bit of a generic commander. But yeah, that's basically my only criticism. Saying this out loud makes the six kind of unjustified. <laughs> so I will I will adjust to seven or eight. <laughs> free points. I talked myself into free points. You didn't even have to do something. <laughs> yeah, I I think maybe a ten is a little bit like harsh, but like it's it reads like something very exciting. I feel the flavor is completely there. Um, maybe you don't need green for a skeleton. That's my other criticism. Yes, yeah, skeletons I, aren't necessarily green, I but can, scavenging is green kind of. I can, I can see that. You could ditch the green, it works perfectly fine. Uh, maybe this is something I don't know. Green has some commander applications for the deck. Also scavenging uh, skeletons is very flavorful for right. a skeleton commander. I like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's very neat that the line plus one was, oh, you control and in your graveyard actually has relevancy. Like people, I, I, I mean, nowadays it's pretty common that the, the card has something it does and then the payoff directly on it. Yeah. And then you connect those and they just work fine. And I'm sure there are other ways to abuse power in your graveyard. Not big ones, but like when you uh, deal damage for power in, in your graveyard, yeah. it's not big. I, yeah. I agree. You you could change that um, maybe even for a plus two plus oh. I wouldn't, I would like depending on how strongly you want to push the commander, you can scale it somehow. It's like skeleton gets plus uh, X plus O as many you have. Yeah. So then you even have a much bigger or uh, to the power that the scavenge actually makes your creatures bigger that make your scavenge bigger, you know? It's like mm. that they depend on each other. But either way, the idea of using this is unique. I love it. It's something I haven't seen and it makes total sense to me. All right. Giantly grown Hound of Conda, white green legendary creature, 5-5. Five, five. Hound. Didn't the effect last until the end of turn? Jamin the Goblin. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Jamin the Goblin. So, so apart from me uh, being, being a goblin in this instance, this is a four for me, and not only because I'm a goblin. <laughs> I swear. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Um, I mean, it's it's so. There's clearly multiple callbacks be going on here, kind of um, to Watchdog or Watchhound or whatever it was Just called. Just Hound two of Conda. Oh yeah, also Hound of Conda. Yeah. But Watchdog was a two mana three three, like a vanilla creature for the same cost. Watch Wolf. Watch Wolf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Hound of Conda, the one mana two two legendary and giant growth, and oh, it doesn't fall off. Um, that being said, I feel like this card is very poorly balanced for different formats. In a format like Modern, yeah, who cares? You've got a 2-mana 5-5. Five, five. We, we do that all the time. In Limited, you've got a 2-mana 5-5. Five, five. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm dead in four turns, and it's my <laughs> second turn? Hmm, what am I gonna do? Once again, great joke, funny all around. We, we, we shared our laughs, uh, we had some giggles. Um, but for actually printing this into a limited environment, uh, that, that's just wild. And it doesn't even add anything interesting to other formats. Yeah, I agree. It's bleak, 
it's neat to the point that you laugh at it once and it's not worth a coin. Yeah. Terrarial Troll is a 2-2 troll shaman for red-green, which says whenever you sacrifice a land, you may create a 2-1 red and green troll creature token. And for three mana, you can sacrifice a land and deal two damage to any target. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think that's a four. A four? Yeah. I would have given this a 10, Toho. Okay. Then let me picture you with this scenario, right? Yeah. It's turn three. Yeah. You play the troll. You do. You play a fetch land. Oh, Toho. <laughs> Would you believe me if I said I didn't think this through? <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely do that. Yeah. Uh, so um, good, good thing I don't design cards. Well, I think that could actually be all right because that's about as much as it does. So maybe a four a little bit. And it's modern, right? Like there's yeah. obvious, there are no fetch lands in Pioneer. Yet. There are evolving wilds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yet you, but you also then you have a. Evolving Wild and Fable Passage. Yeah. Which, if you want to play those, go ahead and do so. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cost that I, it's fair to accept. Yeah. But mm. I, that might actually not be good enough for Modern, so maybe I'm just horribly wrong. Um, you have quite a neat syn synergy in both of them. Um, I don't understand why you may create a thing. It's also much Yeah, it, it's probably just create one. Like just create one. It's a hassle in Arena to click one more button. Beneath yeah. Me. <laughs> He's done that more than, so more than like one. Some of those cards where you have to click buttons are just annoying. Even with the fetch land thing still in mind, uh, you don't play, like if you play this on two, it just gets shocked or something. And then on turn three, you get two, a two, two and a two, one, and then a two, one every turn. I mean, it's basically not different than a fable, right? You, you, if you get, get rid of the fable, you still leave the token behind. So yeah. maybe it's just fair, you know? Maybe it's just really Yeah, good. maybe it's still a 10. There you have it. Uh, we had some awesome designs. Yep. Uh, we had some and designs to be improved upon. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't want to miss the submission for next time, uh, we usually do a community post before we record these types of videos. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and then you'll be notified whenever we upload as well as whenever we post a community post where you can submit your custom card designs and hopefully next time we'll rate your cards. Yeah, in the meantime, I mean, obviously, if you like the content, this specifically or any other thing we do, and we do many, many, many more things as you can see in the channel, like and subscribe the video, follow us, and hopefully we'll get to see the next one soon.